Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Wood Resurrected. I've got a need for a crosscut sled to make uh, my shopsmith here a little bit more accurate on crosscuts. So we're going to do that today, and we're going to get it put together so we can use it for future projects. So stay tuned. So before we get started, I'd like you to check out my Patreon page and become a patron. And uh, all the proceeds go to support the uh, various projects that I will be putting out. So that is greatly appreciated. If you're watching on YouTube, I invite you to subscribe and hit that uh, notification icon so you can get notified of future content. So first we got to change, uh, let's get on to our current project. First we got to change this out and get it into a table saw configuration so that we can get uh, boards cut and get things uh, put together. I've got some 3 8 plywood I'm going to use as the base for the crosscut sled and I'm just going to use a, a couple pieces of, uh, of pine, I think of uh, leftover 2 by uh, not 2 by 4s um, leftover pallet wood that I'm going to be using and that'll give us a nice uh, sliding crosscut sled that we can use on our table saw. So first let's get the configuration of the shopsmith changed here and we can go from there. Huh, that was snug. Uh, so before we, uh, because we're going to be cutting plywood, I'm going to use my rip blade. That way we get uh, as many cuts as possible. Uh, I don't have a, a multi-function blade. So this will be the, uh, the next best thing. Uh, and of course for the shopsmith this is a, a 10 inch blade. So let's measure our grooves. Looks like they are about 3 quarter inch by just under, just under 3 eighths deep. So we're going to make them just a little bit shy of that so that they'll slide nice and smooth through these grooves. Let's see if we got anything that's close. Okay. So for the first cut, we're going to set it up to three eighths, or excuse me, three quarter inch. Uh, and that'll give us our first cut for our runners. deep. Get our fence. So the nice thing about this, the shopsmith is all we got to do is get it close and then we can use the, uh, the adjustment on the output for the, uh, the shaft and then there is an adjustment screw to get uh, the fence nice and square. So those are a couple slick items that uh, are handy with shopsmiths. So we're going to make this even on both sides. Let's turn it around so we can use the same measurement. We're going to crank it most of the way down. Okay, that's close. Right on. So we're going a half and a sixteenth over that we can adjust out with our. That's not going to stay, of course. That would be too easy. So just loosen down here and then we can adjust this out to three quarter where we want it. Actually, I'm going to go just a little bit over, 
about a 30 second or so. Us our uh, pieces for underneath our guides that will slide serve to slide through here. As you can see, this isn't quite three quarter. So we're going to do two pieces, and we're going to use both of these pieces that we're going to run through. And we're going to run them through this way, if you were curious, and that way they can. It'll be nice and square, so. Let's get some PPE going. Everything is locked down like so. Headstock's locked down, our height adjustment's locked down. Before we get started, let's check our height. Oh, we need to come down just a little bit. There we go. Now we are ready to rock. All right, those are done. Now what we need to do is adjust to our 5 sixteenths uh, depth. Then we can turn them on their side and run them through that way. And we're gonna have to move our fence anyway. that to our th just we're going to move it to three eighths but just as before we're going to use our output shaft and adjust that out let's lock that down so it doesn't move And there we go. So for fine tuning is usually done more simply with this output. There's a 30 second under. Actually, we're going to go a full 16th. Under 3 eighths. That's pretty narrow. That'll be fun to saw. <laughs> Before we do that, we're going to adjust this, and this way we can go over our fence and keep our boards down while still supported on the back end, because you do not want to put anything through the shops or through a, a table saw with a fence there that uh, doesn't have support on the back end. That's how things jam up, and you launch boards across your shop. Come on. Go. 
All right, let's see how we did. Pretty nice fit. All right, so with these made, we can move on to the bigger part. Pull this, uh, pull the fence off. That's gonna go further out this time. And we're gonna put our table extension on. I think that'll work nicely. So we're gonna cut it to about two feet. So we need to move down to that end. We'll just move both at the same time. Our fence on and ready. I always position this far enough left that I can get this set screw or adjustment screw to hit uh, the fence ex or the table extension. So that way I can make sure that it's square. And then I'll usually measure between the, uh, the fence here and uh, this side of the miter, the miter groove. That way you can make sure your, your fence is square with a further distance than just the blade. 19 and three quarter. So we got to adjust out a little bit. So I'm just going to adjust this screw until it's at 19 and three quarter. There we go. Make sure it doesn't move on us. Pretty good. All right, and with that, we are ready to run. Actually, we got to do a last minute adjustment. The actual 24 inches, and we'll do a height adjustment as well. So we got to come back with our blade. bump our headstock back. There we go. Right at two feet. Now we're only going to be cutting three eighths, so we don't need all this blade sticking out. So we're gonna come down to about five eighths, I think. And then from there, we can use one of our freshly cut boards or pieces, I guess you would say. And we'll check our level, make sure our extension, our table extension Is where we want it. There we go. That's not square. <laughs> and that reflects the same thing. So I'm getting betting this side was cut off of before probably using a uh, skill saw or something similar to that. This side isn't very square either. Hopefully, there we go. So there's our square corner. So this is the corner we're gonna use 
to cut out of. So we're going to use this as the back side and this will be against our fence. All right, I think we're all set. Let's make sure everything's tightened down. And we're ready to go. Easy peasy. Now I should have a two foot by two foot board. Perfect. All right. So we only have one other piece to make. Um, it's not going to require a lot of effort. And that's going to be our backstop. Which we will want to be square and two feet across. I may just run this one through the joiner to make sure that it's nice and even. All right, so we're going to do a little bit of reconfiguration. Nothing drastic. Because I don't like the saw blade being on here when using other elements of the shopsmith, I'm going to pop that off real quick. There we go. And from there, it's just a simple movement down to the jointer. Let's see, accessory and headstock. Oop. Piece of cake. plug her in and we'll get this uh, edge jointed so it's nice and square and flat and even. Then all we want out of this is a two foot section. So we're going to throw our cross cut blade back on. This doesn't have to be exact. So I think I'm just going to take it right out of the middle. Because it does get a little bit narrower down here in the end, as you may be able to see. Well, that may prove to be interesting. This has got a, it's got a bow in it. So I think we might end up taking that out. So if we take our two foot section, out of the thick end, so we're gonna go here, and here. All right. So our minimum thickness is 
right about an inch. Down here, ooh, that's pretty close. I think we can get away with that. So we won't have to rip it down because we're getting rid of this end and this will be on the back side anyway. All right. Let's set up our table saw. And our miter gauge. So just a little more breathing room. There we go. Start this side. All right, let's do it. Oh, nobody ever said it was perfect, right? <laughs> So, this will sit back here like so. Why is that long? Did I mismark this? Must have. I bet I moved my saw, or my, uh, no, it's 24. Oh, <laughs> that's our cutoff piece. Bear with me, folks. I'll get it right eventually. There we go. All right, so this will sit back here like so. And that'll be our fence. And then we'll have the two runners on the bottom side. So I think I'm gonna use something like this. And I'm just gonna cut 24 inches out of it and then uh, I'll joint this backside and then we can use that to go across here and then we can cut things up to three inches. So we're gonna run this through the joiner to get that end smooth. Actually, let's cut the 24 inches out because we're already set up for that. Let's see, this is 18, so nine is center. So we'll put our 12 inch mark right there. And our 24. We'll grab our miter again. And we'll cut this puppy out. So there we go. We got our 24 four inch section that'll go on the back side. That'll keep that uh, fairly flat and stable. So we'll run that through the joiner to get it smooth. And that way that's not uh, warping our board at all. Oh, go up high enough. There we go. Again, I'm gonna pull off the blade so we can run our joiner. All 
All right, now I think we're ready for assembly, which will be a little bit interesting. So we can put this piece on first, but our push board, our push board is going to be a little more complicated because it's not as tall because I didn't want it to be hugely tall. So when you're cutting with the crosscut sled, you don't want to go all the way through if you're doing anything more than half an inch. So it's something you have to be careful with and keep in mind with, uh, with this setup. You could use another one of these on the front side instead of that short one that we used. And uh, then you could cut up to an inch and a half, two inches, three inches, depending on where you want it to be. So we're gonna want our blade back on. Judging by our board, see there's the squares and here's uh, the side that we cut right there. So that should be good and square. So we'll use that as the front side. And I like this side better than this side. So this will be the top. So we're gonna do this a little bit differently than probably most of the videos you have seen. I'm going to lay our runners in here. I'm going to square it up at the front edge of this table. That'll hold these together. Now, if we loosen this front end, now I should be able to just push it right in. There we go, we got a good countersink on it. Clamps to the front side. Same thing on the back. Now ready for our back support. As I said before, this one isn't as crucial to be square.
tap it and drill them in. And I don't want to get them too tight to split the, uh, the runner. I'm just giving it a little tap at the end. I think uh, it may be a little snug, but now that we've got the holes made, we can take it back apart and sand things down. All right, so what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna put a temporary board on the front side. This one, just so we can uh, square it up. Over tightened it. Well, that sucks. Well, looks like I might be uh, adjusting one of these. So the benefit here. So we do have two screws in the other one. So we can just knock this through and do it again. That's bad positioning. See if I can hit that. Uh, actually, should be able to go top down. There we go. Now we'll just have to be extra careful when we put these screws in again. Clamp this down. And then we're going to run it through. We're going to actually basically drop this table onto this blade, and that oh, I don't really have room to clamp it on the back side. So we'll just have to be careful about that. And that'll give us our cut. And from there we'll know we'll be able to square that up with, with our actual board. This is just the temporary one. I'm pretty sure our blade is lined up. Make sure to go through the hole. That would suck. And voila, we got a nice saw slot that we can use. 
with our square, square things up. Oh wow, we got this right on. That is perfectly square. Couldn't be happier with that. So, we'll unclamp that. Remove our screws from this board. <laughs> tricky, tricky. All right, push it back to the front. And then swap out our temp for our actual. Okay, so this one, I'm actually gonna put a, a screw in either end and I'll probably do the same on that end just to make sure that these stay nice and solid. So let's make this one square. And again, I'm just using the cut as a guide. One more clamp. There we go. Let's double check that it's square. And it is. Very nice. our pilot holes. So we're gonna do two through the ones we already have. And then I'm also gonna do one on the ends. Make sure we got enough countersink on these so they don't stick out. In the event that uh, one end of this is running on our table here, or our extension table. All right. And there it is, folks. Uh, I want to say thanks to everybody who uh, tuned in to check this out. It's uh, one easy way to build a cross-cut sled for your shopsmith. It uh, takes a little bit of accuracy, but you can get it done with a uh, minimal amount of hardware. All you need is a, I used a two foot, uh, two by two, two foot by two foot chunk of plywood and uh, a board for the end and one for the front. Um, you want to make sure that at least the one in the front is nice and flat and even so that, uh, so that you're getting a nice square cut. But uh, other than that, eight screws is what I used. And... Uh, you got yourself a crosscut sled. So thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification icon so you can be notified of future content. Uh, leave any comments in the comment section. If, uh, if you like the build, if you don't like the build, either way, uh, I'm open to all opinions. So 
Um, I also have uh, my Patreon page, so if you want to swing by there and check out my, uh, my other videos, become a patron of Wood Resurrected, I would greatly appreciate it. All proceeds go to my building of various projects. So uh, once again, thanks for tuning in. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you next time.